Hi, I'm Chef Nicholas Lodge and welcome to this Flower Pro video where I'm going to introduce you to my brand new Flower Pro Blossom. So let's get started. So this is my brand new Flower Pro Blossom mold. Now this mold is a multifunctional mold, not just for, as I said, spring, which we're going to show in these videos. So things like cherry blossom, um, apple blossom, plum, peach blossoms, but also this has many other uses uh, for other flowers. So let's just talk a little bit about the mold. So first of all, on the mold, there are these three main cavities. Now the one here that has got almost like a sort of heart shape, that is the one I'm going to use in this particular video for the Yoshino cherry, which is a Japanese cherry, an ornamental cherry like Prunus. Um, and I'm going to use this and show you a single and double variety. In my second video for the blossoms, I'm going to be using this one here, which is more of a sort of a standard blossom shape, which we're going to be using for the plum and the peach and apricot and the different other flowering fruits. Now, um, on the, these molds here, for example, this one, a little later uh, this year, I will be showing and bringing a video out showing how to use this to make primroses and primula. And then this one can be used for geraniums. So for the summertime geraniums, there's many, many different blossoms and flowers can be made for this. This one can be used for citrus blossoms, but also can be used for, as I said, other types of like little mini orchids and lots of different flowers as well. And then here we have, uh, these are used for calyxes. And when um, my video launches of the primula and primroses, this will be used for the inside part of the primrose or primula, which is a darker color. But these can be used also for things like sweet pea calyxes and small calyxes. Then there are leaves. Now there is uh, two types of leaf. This one has got a serrated edge to it. So there is a smaller one and a larger one here. And you're going to see that used in this video. And then I will be showing how to use the plain leaf one in my second uh, spring blossoms video. And that is used also for lots of different like jasmine leaves and little small leaves. And then here we have, uh, there are two types of buds. Um, this is the one I'm going to use in this particular video. And these are gonna be more rounded buds. And then in my second video, when I do the apple blossoms and things, I'm going to use the slightly more elongated pointed ones. Now cherry sometimes have more rounded buds or sometimes have more elongated buds. So really it's your choice to which type you would use. Okay, so there's large, medium and small, large, medium and small of the, um, of the buds. And then here, this is the secondary part of the uh, pack. And uh, this is the leafena. So when we actually use this for the leaves, we'll have our paste in there and our wire, and then we're gonna press this on, like with a lot of my other Flower Pro products, gonna press that on to vein the back of the leaves. And then this is actually here, um, it's going to be used, this is the back veiner. So when we actually make the back of the flower, we'll be using that to vein the back. And the little hole there will accommodate the sort of like the witch's hat, Mexican hat shape we're gonna use for most of these type of flowers. So a very um, innovative mold, like all of my Flower Pro, and uh, you'll have lots of fun using this for many, many different projects. So remember, though as we call in this the Blossoms mold, don't think of it just for like springtime blossoms. It really has, as I said, you will be able to use this throughout most of the year for different types of projects. So let's get started on the first stage, which is going to be the center. So I just did a Google search on cherry blossoms. There's obviously gonna be thousands of images uh, of cherry blossoms. A lot of these are actually, of course, from Japan where cherry is very famous. Um, having been to Japan over 130 times, I've been to Haname, which is cherry blossom party where Japanese workers go and sort of camp out all day. And then their work friends come and join them and they drink and have beer and food and things under the cherry tree. And of course, cherries uh, vary a lot. Like here in the United States, we have a lot of the Yoshino cherry as well, which is a traditional Japanese ornamental cherry. Now, of course, all cherries bear um, have blossoms, but not all of them bear fruit. Like the prunus, which is what I'm showing you, which is the single flowering and double flowering, is an ornamental cherry. Okay, and there are some varieties of cherry that obviously have little small fruits, but they're very sour and so not one that you can consume. Whereas like Mount Rainier, for example, in Washington State here in the US, US have beautiful uh, cherries, the Mount Rainier cherry. Um, but anyway, so cherries vary a lot. So the color of the cherry blossoms vary from white right through to quite a strong pink. And you have single variety, double variety. 
as do the stamens, all right? So the stamens in the middle of the cherry blossom vary in color. So I'm gonna show you a couple of different color variations. Um, but as I said, depending on really like maybe the color scheme of the cake, um, like if you were gonna do pink cherry blossom, that looks really pretty on gray. It looks nice on very pale mint green. Um, if you were going to do, for example, like a sort of an actual darker colored, like a navy blue, uh, sugar paste or rolled fondant cake, like the pink would look beautiful, but also you could do a white as well, okay? And of course, here in the United States, like here in Georgia, where I live, we have a lot of thousands of cherry blossom trees. And we have uh, in March, usually early March, we have a big cherry blossom festival in Macon, Georgia, which is a little bit south of Atlanta. And of course, like Washington, D.C. is famous. All of the, mostly the cherry trees in Washington, D.C. Uh, were all donated uh, by Japan to the United States. And then we also sent dogwood trees from the United States. So in, for example, Hibiya Park, where the Imperial palaces in Japan, uh, you'll see dogwood trees which were given to the Japan by the United States um, after the war was and things. So it's a very, as I said, a flower you'll see used a lot and it's a really beautiful flower to use. So anyway, so when we make the center of the cherry blossom, we're going to um, going to start off working from your instructions. And so first of all, we're going to show you, I'm going to show you the single cherry blossom. All right, both the stamens are the same for the single and double. Now in your directions, it first of all talks about, you're going to, I'm going to show you actually talk about three different options. So there's option A, option B, option C. Now these are Japanese silk stamens. They're very, very tiny. All right, they're really the smallest commercial stamens you can buy. And these are available obviously like through my website, also in the UK, many companies like Hammelworth and Old Bakery carry these. But uh, it's not something generally you're gonna find in a lot of cake decorating stores. It's more of a specialty statement. But I will be showing you, as I said, another option with using just sewing thread as well. Now these come, these are white, these are ivory. So they're just like a little bit off white. And then these are yellow ones, all right? And that's usually the colors these come in. Now, um, it doesn't matter what color you use for what I'm gonna show you because we're all gonna, they're all gonna end up looking pretty much the same. So I'm gonna use the, um, the ivory one, which is the middle one. Now, what we're gonna do is in your instructions there, it says take one eighth of a bunch of fine silk, white ivory or yellow stamens. This will be approximately 20. Now, what we're gonna do here, gonna just take the wire off. Now, if you only were making say two cherry blossoms, what you can do is of course, you can just measure out like 20 stamens. What I do here is I take the stamens and then I normally just do this by eye. So I'm gonna divide the stamen bunch into proximity into half, okay? And then I'm going to then take the stamens and then I'm gonna divide them into half again. I'm just using some fine, stain, uh, fine tweezers for this. Okay, so you're really just dividing them into sort of four. You don't have to count these all, but you're just gonna do them into sort of four uh, bunches. All right, so it's gonna just put these into like four little bunches. And don't worry if they vary a little bit. And then what you'll do is you'll then divide each of the quarters into uh, half again, you see? So you're just gonna divide that and you do the third one and the fourth one. So you're gonna have eight little, so this will be enough. One bunch of stamens is enough to make um, eight, obviously, of the cherry blossoms, okay? So I'm just gonna put these to one side because I'm just gonna show you the center part of this. All right, now we're gonna take some uh, wires. You can, uh, these are 28 gauge uh, green wires. On your directions, it says green or white wires. I have these on a magnet. All right, so I'm just gonna take a wire. It's a good way to keep them, um, obviously, so they're all together. And then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take your stamens. You just wanna tap them so they're level. All right, so just use your fingers, just sort of tap them gently. So you just wanna try and get them so all of the little uh, seed head, little end parts are all gonna be at the same level. All right, so you just wanna just try and get that, that level like that, okay? Now what we're gonna do is gonna fold this in half. So this means you have approximately, you know, anywhere between, you know, sort of 36 and 40 to 42 or so little stamens like this. Okay, now we're going to use a ruler. I'm using here my size guide. And if you haven't seen the new plastic size guide, this is a plastic size guide, so it's very durable and you can wipe this clean and uh, works very, very well. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to make the stamens um, 
half an inch or about 13 millimeters. All right, now, when we do the size guide, so with my like Ultimate Flower Members Club, um, I always obviously, and in my books and things, have the sizes both in centimeters or millimeters and also in inches as well. So there are some things that are easier to measure like in centimeters, like 20 centimeters, 10 centimeters, but also there are some times where it's easier to use the half inch, all right, because a half inch is approximately 13 millimeters, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is you're going to so we're gonna go from the tip of the stamen to, so this is the tip of the stamen here at the half inch. All right, so you're going to just, so I'm gonna hold my thumb and first finger. So you see the actual length of the stamen, including the stamen head, is within that half inch or about 13 millimeters, all right? And then what you do is gonna take then a piece of wire and you can, I'm right-handed, so I'm just gonna go back here just because of camera, okay? And so you take your, your stamens like this, and then what I do is I hold the, transfer that over. So, so what I've done is, this is where I'm gonna wrap my wire around. So you see this part here is the half inch, okay? And then what you do is you take the wire, now this is the 28 gauge wire, so I put this running between my, so there's about a third of it above my thumb and finger and about two thirds down here. I change, so I'm changing back over, all right? If you need to just check, just to make sure that that's about, as I said, and then you take this part of the wire and you're gonna wrap this around tightly a couple of times, all right? Now, what you wanna do is then just check that that is half an inch. And if you need to just slide the wire down just a little tiny bit, you can do. So don't worry too much about it exactly. But as I said, you can see that from the wire to the tip of the stamen, it is about half an inch, or as I said, about 13 millimeters, okay? But you need to get this nice and tight, all right? Now then, once you've done that, we're going to then just use a pair of scissors, okay? And we're going to just, and generally I would just do this on a little mat or something so you can get rid of these. Now I'm gonna cut that, uh, gonna cut the excess stamen, but I'm still leaving a little bit. So you see, I've almost got about one third, and then I'm just gonna cut the excess stamen thread off. I'm gonna use some nice sharp scissors. Okay, and then we're just gonna get rid of that thread. And then what we do is you're gonna bring this down. Okay, and then we're going to now uh, take the stamen and we're going to tape it. Now we're gonna use half width. Now you can either use like a color called twig, which is this color here. So this is, a, and then, or you can use brown. And if you look at the difference, you see the brown is more chocolate. The twig is almost got a little tiny bit of a green tinge to it. All right, so it's whatever you have. So either the brown or the twig color. And some, uh, you know, some places will just have the brown sort of, uh, but as I said, you can get obviously find different colored floral tapes. And what you're then gonna do is we're going to take the floral tape here. Now I hold the floral tape where the wire is and I use my, just stretch my tape and I'm gonna go around like a piece of string. So I wanna go around a couple of times so you're almost getting that nice and tight, all right? Because it's important the stamens don't come out, all right? And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna just tape down with your floral tape down and you're gonna come down about, at least about halfway down the wire here, like so, okay? I'm just gonna show you that again because um, it's just one of those techniques that, as I said, but this is the way we do a lot of the flower centers. If you watch my, uh, for example, like my Flower Pro Poppy with the thread, which I'm gonna show you next. So you fold this in half, and you remember you're gonna hold this, so you want these about, approximately about half an inch, but you see how you're using almost like you then change out to this hand, and you're gonna bring your wire down, all right? You hold that at that point there, you take the end of the wire, you're gonna go around nice and tightly. So you really wanna pull it nice and tight a couple of times. So you see what the wire is, the wire is going up, it's going around and it's coming out there like so. Then we're going to take your excess thread. And of course, when you're making lots of these, you can do all the trimming at one time, okay? You're gonna bring this down and then we're gonna take your floral tape, hold the floral tape, go around like a piece of string about two times, and then just bring your tape. So this is half width tape here, gonna come at least about halfway down the wire, okay? Now, once you get to that point, we're going to fluff the stamens. So we're going to now, gonna just use the stamens here. So I'm using my fine tweezers, but you want to do this after following the directions. You do this after you've done the um, taping because that will hold it all together, you see? So. So you're just gonna, just gonna tape these, you're just gonna use your tweezers, 
Now, so these are actually on silk thread, so they're very, very fine. It's almost like, you know, sewing thread, which I'm going to show you the next technique, all right? So that is going to be um, how we make the stamens. Now, once you get the stamens made, I'm going to show you next how to do the coloring. And we're going to do the coloring on these centers. So now we're going to move on to the coloring. Now in your instructions, it says if we've made this with white stamens or the ivory stamens, we're going to dust the thread part of these um, yellow. Okay, if obviously you've used yellow stamens, the threads are already yellow. Okay, so I'm using here, um, so this is a daffodil yellow. It's just like almost like a lemon yellow color. Okay, and then what you're going to do here, you're just going to just sort of dust that. Not too small a brush, so you're just going to brush that over and these take the color on very, very well. All right, and that's why, as I said, it doesn't matter whether you're using the, uh, the white or the yellow. So of course, if you're making 12 cherry, you do this on all 12 of your stamens. Um, then we're going to use uh, here Harrison's yellow, which is just like, if you look at it, it's like a golden yellow color, almost like a sunflower petal color. So you're gonna then brush that onto the tips. So you're just gonna put a little bit of the Harrison's yellow, so just a little bit darker. Now if you, you can also take a little bit of orange and yellow and mix, and so that means you're going to, that will just go on to the tips, okay? And if you're doing the yellow stamens, you're just going to brighten up the top or darken up the top also with the Harrison's yellow, okay? So the Harrison's yellow will be used, but you don't have to, of course, on the stem there, put those on, okay? And then we're going to use some prairie green, which is a color I use a lot, so prairie green. And then we're just going to dust a little bit of prairie green with a round brush into the middle here like that. So you can see how this is going to give you your nice fine stamens for your cherry. Okay, now um, you can also uh, in my, uh, the end, towards the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to do uh, the prunus, which is the, as I said, the double flowering prunus, okay? Um, and on the stamens on here, I'm going to use the thread option, which I'll be showing you next. But those stamens are a green color with pink on the ends of them, okay? So, so I'm going to be showing you with a thread version on those, but you could also make the stamens. And then what you would actually do there is you would use some uh, color here. So you take a little bit of the, so like if you were wanting to do that with stamens, this is just the, so again, you're gonna then just put the, this is just a light green. So that would go over the stamens. And then you put the green in the middle here. So a little bit of the green in the center, okay? And then you would put a little bit of pink. Um, so you could use a little bit of pink on your edge. This color is called American Beauty. It's quite a strong pink because you're doing it on a very, very tiny amount. So you just would brush over the top, all right? This one was, most of them were done. So you're just gonna, so you see then you're gonna have, so this one is gonna have these very pale pink tips and then the green stem and a little bit darker green in the middle, okay? So that's using um, stamens. And uh, so, but you could do, some cherries have like pink stamens and then almost like a burgundy uh, plum color on the tip. So really, as I said, a lot's going to be dependent on uh, the colors you're using uh, on your uh, cake as far as like, an, and of course, you know, maybe even what other flowers, if you're going to do other flowers with it as well. Now, the second option is going to use um, thread, all right? So this is, as I said, uh, the second option. Now, of course, uh, sewing thread comes in many different colors. You know, this is a sort of creamy yellow, which is really the color of like the lemon stamens. But you could also go a little bolder with a sort of mid-layer yellow or a slightly golden yellow as well, okay? And then also we can use other colors, like you can use mint green and you could use pale pink thread. Um, so I said there's lots of different options there as far as color combinations. Now when we um, do the thread, all right, so how we're going to do this is uh, generally just put the thread into a little container. I'm going to actually use my flexi scraper. So I'm going to take my flexi scraper here and with my flexi scraper I'm gonna, just going to hold the thread and I'm just going to go around again 20 times. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, so I've gone 20 times around there. And if you don't have a flexi scraper, you could use also like a business card, a credit card. It's sort of, but this is obviously um, a Flower Pro product, so I'm showing you that. So we're going to go around 20 times with your thread. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to take this off. We're going to just slide this off of the end here, like so. So you're going to have this loop. Now this will actually be enough to make two, two centers. All right, so you're going to have your loop here. 
Now, alternatively, you can also go around your fingers as well, but you, you can actually hold like usually about three fingers. If you look here, so you can also go around like three fingers also. All right. Now here, what we're going to do, this is going to make two centers. So we're going to wire it in exactly the same way. So here your loop, so you just hold on the end there. I'll take my wires. And then what I do is place my wire. Now you need to have enough here, right? There's about a centimeter or so there because you have to have enough to hold on to and also to trim as well. So you see how you have your little loop at the end here. You hold this. All right. Now this is how I did the thread, the black thread for the poppies, my Flower Pro poppies. All right. But just obviously more went around more times. So your extra wire comes there. And then what you do here is you're just going to just go around with your wire a couple of times there and get that nice and tight. All right, so you see how you've done that on one end and then on the other end. So just sort of like pull them all like level, okay? And you're going to pull them all level and then on the other end, we're going to take the wire, going to hold this. All right, and again, it's going to go around nice and tight and do like that. Okay, so you've got your two. So you've actually wired both ends of this, all right? Now, what we're then going to do then is I'm just going to fold it into an arch shape. So you're just going to fold the, you're going to fold the wires into like an arch shape there. And then just going to cut that loop in the, the arch shape in the middle. So now that has given us two, uh, two centers, okay? Now, just like we did on the thread, uh, when we did the uh, stamens on the thread is the same. We're just going to then just trim trim those off. But you know, you want to use like these are obviously needlework scissors. So they're nice and sharp. These are like little tiny multi scissors as well. So something that's going to be nice and sharp, because especially when we trim the trim the ends here. All right. So again, you see I've trimmed off. So you don't trim too close to the wire. All right. And then you're going to do the same on the other end here. And the reason, um, as I said, using the like the flexi scraper, it means everybody's going to have exactly the same length, all right? Because if you take your fingers, you know, if I said like three fingers, some of you have very tiny fingers, it's obviously going to be a little bit short to get the pieces. Now here, all right, what we're going to do is we're going to bring this down. So you're going to bring those two like little legs down. And then again, you would just tape over the base of this. So it's going to just tape over the base. So just going to stretch that. And then just going to take the, and then again, where the wire is, you're going to go around a couple of times and going to tape down here like so. All right, it's so going to come down the wire. You know, half two thirds will be fine because the cherry doesn't have a long stem on it. Now, of course, don't pull the thread because they will just come out quite easily, although we've gone around. But just the, the important thing is with your wire and with your tape is getting it nice and tight, okay? It's going to just tape down here, like so. Okay. And then what we're going to do is again, we're going to bring in our ruler here. So now we're going to make the stamens. So these need to be made, as I said, um, half an inch or 10 millimeters long. And so these are going to be a little bit longer than you need them. All right. And so you're just going to then again, just going to take your, all right, just trim those so they're from the where the brown finishes to where the thread is, is going to be 10 millimeters, um, uh, 12, 13 millimeters or half an inch, okay? And so you just would trim your, obviously do the same on the other one. So that is how we would make the thread center. And then also um, you can, um, when you make these, just so you just, again, you can change the color of this, all right? So for example, like this one here, which I'm going to use for the, um, for the pruner, the double flowering pruners. This is going to be like a sort of a pinky, a one with pink, uh, pink pollen and then uh, green stems, you see? So you can change the color of the thread. Now we, again, we're going to fluff this out. All right, so we're just going to just fluff this out. So this is going to make your, now don't sort of tug too hard, but you see how you're just opening this out with your tweezers. All right, and that's going to be how you would make the stamens. And then what we're going to do is going to now move on to the coloring of this. So for the coloring, I'm going to take, so again, we're going to take a little bit of um, our green. So we're going to use the same green, so the prairie green. And this really will suffice for most of the, most of the varieties you're making, okay? So you're going to take your 
like a prairie green, just a light green. And if you don't even have a darker green, just use some corn flour or corn starch added to that. And so then what we're gonna do is gonna take that and I'm gonna put some green into the middle of that first. All right, so you see how I'm gonna have a little bit of green in the middle, okay. And then once we've got the green in there, so you need to um, have some yellow pollen. Now this is um, commercial pollen, all right? So this is a Nicholas Lodge brand product, um, but also many companies like in the UK, Sugar Flare and Squires Kitchen, and several companies do pollen. Um, and uh, so this is yellow pollen, okay? And I've used that on my Lily videos and on my tulips and some of my other videos as well, my poppy video. But uh, you can also make that using semolina, okay? So semolina is uh, used for pizzas and things. So it's a semolina flour. So it's a nice fine texture, all right? So you can see it's a, so it's a little bit of texture in there. And what you would do is just put a little bit of that into a container now, for most of you, this amount would last you a lifetime, all right? You need very, very little. So don't take like, you know, a pound or 500 grams of semolina, but just a little tiny bit, like half a teaspoon, a teaspoon. And then if you add, for example, like an egg yellow color, Harrison's yellow, put a little bit of that into there and then just shake it until you get it to about comparable color to the dust, all right? So you just add enough to get a comparable color to your dust. Um, and that is that. Now here um, for the, um, double prune, double flowering cherry, I've made actually pink. So what I did there is I just took some semolina because this is a, like a custom color, some semolina. So I just took about a teaspoon. And then what I did is I added a little bit of American Beauty. Now American Beauty is quite a strong color. So I want more of a sort of a, a sort of a baby pink, like a mid pink color. So just add enough. So start off very lightly and then just shake it and then just get to the sort of color you want, okay? Um, and so that would be how you would do that. Now we're gonna use some um, confectioner's glaze. So confectioner's glaze, which we talked about in a lot of my Flower Pro videos. So the confectioner's glaze is a food grade shellac, and this is used to add uh, shine to things, but also we use this as a glue for like pollen. So like on my calla leaf Flower Pro, I use this for the pollen. Now what I do here is I'm gonna take the glaze, and I'm actually gonna, I'm working here on some like waxed paper. So you wanna just do on something that's disposable, okay? So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glaze down uh, onto there. So you just have this little like a puddle of glaze. And um, so then what I do is you're going to take the and you're going to very lightly just like dip it into the because you don't want to sort of saturate it. And then you're going to go into the pollen like this. And you see how it's going to give you the pollen. Now if you have any little ones that you don't get pollen on, you can just go back in. And you can just going to go over there like so. And that would be how you would do your, your stamens, all right? So it gives you a very nice realistic looking center. So the other advantage of this from a sort of investment of money, financial investment, you know, obviously these stamens, you know, that will only make eight, um, eight obviously flowers. So thread is going to be a little bit more of an economical way, especially if you had to make, you know, say 40, um, cherry blossoms for a wedding cake. Um, so it's a little less expensive option. Uh, but obviously the stamens are very nice as well. I'm just showing you, as I said, different options there. And so that's how we do that. Now, if you have, um, if you get like a little bit of clumping, that means if you're too generous with going in the glaze, it's going to clump. You can just let it dry a little bit and then you can actually just almost like comb through it with a toothpick, all right? And that would be how you'd separate if you get like a big clump of uh, glaze, all right? And that is how we would do the center. So then if you were doing um, like the, the one for the prunus, all right, so as I said, the double flowering prunus. So if you look here, the two, the two flowers, you'll see how, you see this is the single flowering cherry, um, both very pale pink. And this one I've done with the yellow stamens. Uh, this one I'm using the thread just to show you the different options there. And, um, but when we do the, of course you could do this with the thread as well. So when you do the, um, when we do this one, so again, you're just gonna just fluff out your thread there, like so. And then I would just take that into the glaze. And in the second video of the blossoms, uh, when I show like the, the um, apple blossom and the plum and the peach blossoms and the very variations, I will be using both a combination of the thread centers and uh, which I've covered in this one. But you see how you're gonna get these nice, very pale pink little tips on your stamens, okay? But I found it's easier just to do this technique rather than brushing it on because you almost get too much on there. All right, and you can see how you're gonna get this. But again, if you get a little bit of clumping, you can just go almost like comb through with your 
toothpick and that will just separate the stamens, all right? So you have this really nice uh, center for your, for your uh, cherry. Now, the third option you can use, which would be like if, for example, those of you who are crafters working air drying clay, you know, air drying clay, if you're going to use, let's say, on a wreath on your front door, um, obviously the thread and the, uh, the pollen would be uh, susceptible to going soft, all right? So what you can actually also do is you can use like fishing filament. So if you just take like a fishing line, a fishing filament, this is four pound, um, because this is what I had. But the thing is you can also get thinner, like a, for a one pound, two pound, uh, weight, so that would be a little thinner, so actually it's easier to sort of fluff out. But um, you would just make the same technique as I did for the thread one. This is just in fishing filament, and I would then wire the other end, cut them, and then those ones you actually would paint. So I just actually painted this with some, um, I used some uh, acrylic paint. So I just took some acrylic paint, I had a little bit of yellow gel color and a little bit of like a golden yellow gel, or you could use yellow and golden yellow acrylic paint. And I just painted these. And then once that's dry, you put the glaze on there, or you could use nail polish, and then you would use sand, all right? Because sand doesn't dissolve in moisture. So you just would take some, you can buy online on stores like Amazon, you can buy like yellow sand, little different colors and you can get pink sand, or alternatively just take some sort of light colored sand and color it with some uh, powder color, okay? And that will then be exactly the same, but that would mean that that wouldn't ever go soft or soggy if they got moist, okay? So that's just another. So you, all three of these are in your instructions, so you're just going to, as I said, decide on what uh, what you have. But as I said, for those of you that don't have access to the fine stamens, I've shown you two different options, so the thread one works really, really well as well, okay? So that's going to be, so next we're going to, once we've prepared our stamens, we're going to now move on to make the flower. So for the flower, so in your introduction, it says, note, use a little vegetable fat shortening in all cavities, very light application with a brush or finger. So recently I've been using a brush. This is just a brush actually for stenciling. It's a stencil brush and uh, it's uh, got short bristles and you just keep it for that. So you can just put a little tiny bit of uh, vegetable fat, some shortening onto like the back of your hand, but very, very tiny amount. And I'm just gonna just rub that into the cavity. But uh, I found that this is a little bit easier than using your finger. And typically with your finger, you're often gonna put too much in there, okay? But it's a very, very tiny amount. And then of course this brush you just keep for this purpose, all right? Um, so that was, this is the cavity we're gonna use here. Now, uh, then it talks about coloring the paste. Now, there are many options we have here for different types of flower paste. Like for example, um, this is Renshaw pink, so it's a nice pale pink here, um, so we can use this. Um, the Renshaw gum paste, which I've used in a lot of my videos, usually I add, um, have 85 grams of uh, the gum paste or flower paste, flower modeling paste, and 15 grams of sugar paste or rolled fondant. So this is actually a little bit lighter um, than the pink out of the pack, uh, because when you add the 15 grams of white of sugar paste or fondant to the 85 grams of pink, it will lighten it a little bit. But this is what I use for a pale pink formula. Now, um, then of course you can also uh, use other uh, combinations. So this is the uh, sugar in paste, all right? So this is the sugar in, uh, which is an Indian company. And uh, their pa this paste is a starch based paste. Um, so it's a little bit stronger in that when you're working with the product, uh, this is some that are rolled out. Whereas like a lot of paste, this is actually stays flexible, but you see, so this was actually like about a week old. So the paste never gets really brittle, which um, when you use in like, for example, certain flowers, that can be a big advantage having something that's a little bit flexible. So I'm actually going to use the sugar in paste and I will be using the white sugar in paste, a little bit, tiny bit of the fuchsia pink, which is going to give me the pink. And then I'm gonna also use the green as well, the moss green. And uh, you know this is available in pretty much every country and I've gained through Amazon and things as well. Now here I'm going to use, so that everybody would get the same color, um, I'm going to start off with a number 12 of white. Okay, so I'm going to use my size guide here. I'm going to use a number 12 of white, so that is going to be one third below, two thirds above. And then we're gonna take a number three small of fuchsia pink. Now, this is the uh, sugar in fuchsia. It's a very, very concentrated color. All right, so it's a really, really like a fuchsia pink color. So it's very, very strong. So I actually just need a piece about number three small. All right, so that wants to be a piece that's gonna be a number three to go through the hole. And of course, if you needed more of this, you can just double this recipe and you know, do a double number amount. But you'd actually just, all I need here 
So then you can actually duplicate the exact colors I'm using. So it's going to be a number three, small. So a tiny, tiny amount of, so that's just going to go through the number three hole, okay? And then what I would do is I'm going to mix that together. Now, of course, if you wanted a stronger, if you're doing a stronger pink, they have these nice, um, you know, seals on them. So you can just keep the paste in here, just make sure you seal it up, they stay nice and fresh. And this has like a um, over a two year shelf life. So, and you're just gonna just mix this through. So because the cherry blossom petals are quite thin, um, that is a big advantage having a piece. Now, of course, also Katie Sue sell the air drying clay. So we have an air drying clay as well. But you're just gonna just mix this through and it's gonna give you this just a very pale pink. All right, so we're gonna have this nice pale pink, which is what we're gonna use for the, for the pieces there. But if you want it to be a little bit stronger, you can go a little bit stronger uh, on this, okay? So it's gonna get this nice, this nice pale pink color. And um, so that is how we uh, prepare the pink. Now just mix that through. Now also with the um, sugar in paste, if you, um, especially because it has a long shelf life on it, if it does start to get like a little bit tight, you see this is nice and elastic, there's actually some fresh, but if you have got some and it feels a little bit dense and tight, this is a little different than a normal flour paste or gum paste in that you just dip it in some water. So you just add a little bit of water to it and you see you just mix a little bit of water and what the water will do will actually relax the paste. When we do um, traditional flour paste and gum paste, we often add a little bit of egg white. But you see, so you just add a little bit of water and then you can just soften that and it becomes nice and soft again, all right? So as I said, that's just the, the difference. So with the sugar in paste, you add just a little bit of the water to it. Now we're going to measure off the, uh, so working through now to your, the flour. So we're gonna take a number seven small, very pale pink paste, roll it into a ball and then press on top of the smallest bud cavity, create a hat. Now we're gonna use this smallest bud cavity. So this is gonna be the tiniest hole, all right, which is gonna be this one here. So it's the one, uh, the smallest one close to the, to the actual shape. Remember I've already got the vegetable fat in there. I'm gonna take a number seven small, so it's gonna be a number seven that goes through the hole. So I said, we need to get the petals nice and thin here. Now, as I tell a lot of my students, you know, especially with my Flower Pro Ultimate Members Club, um, with the, um, you know, some of the members, like when they try things, they'll have a little bit of issue working with the paste. If you find that your this is too thin for you to handle, then just go to a regular number seven size, all right? Now, with the sugar in paste, you still, um, we still condition this, so I still work a little bit of vegetable fat into it, just like I would on my normal, like my homemade Tylos paste, or as I said, on the Renshaw paste. Remember, this is a vegan product, as is Renshaw, and of course, the Renshaw one, sometimes we add egg white, which you've seen on some of my videos, to make it nice and elastic. Now, so all we're gonna do now, all right, we're gonna take your, uh, this little hole here, all right? So we're gonna take this little hole here, and gonna take the ball of paste, just place it on top of the ball of paste, and just gonna press it down like that. So you see how you're gonna create this little nipple. Now, this is commonly called a Mexican hat, and if you look at it, it looks almost like the shape of a hat, all right? So all we're gonna do here is just gonna work the brim out a little bit, just to about number nine size, all right? So just, we'll just thin it out just a little tiny bit, so it's about the size of a number nine. And you're just gonna make the little top of the hat like a little witch's hat. You see how it's gonna have a little cone on it? Now, we've already got the vegetable shortening into here. And I work on this side so you can sort of see what's going on. So what we do here is you place this into the mold and I'm just gonna use my finger initially, just to sort of, or your thumb, just to work it in the mold like this. So you're just gonna get a very sort of basic shape there. So you see how what I've done is I've made sure I've stayed within the parameter of the mold, all right? Because you don't want to come past that. Now we're then gonna take the we're gonna take the back veiner. So we're gonna use the back veiner, but we're using a smooth side down. And again, this is a technique I've used on some of my Flower Pro before. I'm just gonna press around the edge of this. All right, so what you're gonna do, so that's gonna to help to squash it in. And then I take, so this is the three cosmetic sponge I use. This is a plain one. This one has just got a hole in it here, which we use for, um, you're gonna see when I put the calyx on. And then this one has got a hole in it, but it's then actually got like four crosses, like a cross in there. And this is made, I use this when I'm doing Mexican hat flowers. So then you put that on the top of there. So you see the little hat will come through there. And I'm just gonna then press in with my, because obviously this is gonna thin out even further. Okay, all right, like this. 
Now we're going to now take a Dresden tool and with a Dresden tool, I'm going to use the Dresden tool on its side. You know, normally we use the Dresden tool like this, but we're actually going to use the Dresden tool and I'm just going to use the Dresden tool and just make sure you stay within it. So you almost pull in your from coming from the hat and you're just stretching the paste out so it comes out to towards the end there. We're just going to finish it off with a cosmetic sponge, but just going to just work that down. I'm going to work this down, but I said this is a number seven small. Now, if you should, um, you know, if you if you are a little bit sort of rough, or if you said you end up with like, let's say, for example, you have a little area that's there is thin. Um, what it says in your instructions, you can just take a little tiny bit off the top of your hat. All right, and then you could like put it on there, like almost like a band, like a bandage or like a like a plaster or a band aid. So you can actually just if you if you can see it's a little thin in an area, you can just take from the top there. And then we're going to and I'm going to use now a cosmetic wedge. Now I found the wedge is a little bit easier because we don't need a lot of pressure here. So I'm just using my cosmetic wedge and just going to push that to the to the very end of the mold of the, the petal. Because this is, as I said, is, is quite thin. So we just really just work in that down to the edge of the petal here, like so. Okay, so we've got the Mexican hat part. So now we're going to take the back veiner. So that we're going to use the vein side down and you just position this over the top. Now, when you do this, you don't want to press, you don't want to go anywhere near that ring because it's going to almost give you like a really in embossed ring on there or a line on there. So you're just going to go around your edge with your finger, your thumb like that. And this is going to vein the back of your, that will be vein the back of your petals. Okay. Just going to flex your mold. I'm going to take this out. So you're going to get this nice, this nice shape. Now we're going to use spring action scissors. Okay. So spring action scissors are fine. And I'm going to just take a little tiny, like a little tiny slice. Okay. So I'm not just making a straight cut. What I'm doing there is I'm just going to do like a little cut and a little tiny cut. So it's just like a little tiny, I put it on my finger there. You can see like a little tiny slice. And what you do there is you're just going to just cut to where the rim of the, the little rim of the, uh, the hat is. Now what this is going to do, this is going to be to separate the petals slightly. And um, because this mold is a multifunctional mold, when you're doing, for example, things like Primula or that, you wouldn't have to do that. All right. But because the Yoshino cherry has like almost like separated petals there. So we're going to do that. Okay. Now we're then going to use um, there's two methods which are written in your text. All right. You're going to use your um, here, your pad. All right. The little black side of the pad. And with my Dresden tool here, I'm going to use my Dresden tool on its side. I'm almost just sort of working around the top half of the pedal quite gently, but I'm doing this on the, so what it's going to do is on the front of the pedal, you see, it's going to give you this nice movement. Because it's also such a small pedal. So using a ball in tool or that uh, really wouldn't do much, but this you just do gently around the, the top half of the pedal. All right. So it's going to go around the top half of the pedal like this with your Dresden tool. So that can be done and this will be done on the soft side of the pad. And then the other option we have is to use the harder side of the pad and we take our companion tool. Now, those of you working with air drying clay, because you can't use plastic tools successfully on, on the air drying clay because it sticks. Um, we could use a rolling technique. So what we do here, you're going to use the needle tool end of your companion tool and you're just going to just roll back and forward like this. A little bit like if you think of like a garret frill when we ruffle with a garret frill, but you're just going to do this on the edge. So just roll in like this with your little and that will do the same thing. All right. So that is how we would do the how we would do this part here. So you've got your frilling on there. And of course, if you're reading, just um, you know, cover cover that over. Um, so then, once we've done that, uh, we're going to then. So then we're going to separate the petals, and then on the back of the flower, work petal top half. So it talks about black side of mini pad with Dresden tool, or on its side or needle tool on the green side of the pad. Then you're going to cut the ends of each heart shaped petal on a cosmetic sponge. This is on the uh, front side. All right, so what we're going to do here, we're going to use the um, cosmetic sponge and I'm going to just use the, the ball tool end and I'm just going to stroke just gently from the outside to the inside, outside to inside on the front of the petals. 
Okay, so this is going to be done on the front side. So you see how it's going to give you this nice shape to your flower. Okay, then we're going to take um, of the ball tool end or the companion tool. And we're, you see how I'm holding the flower? I'm holding it between my thumb and my first two fingers, almost like in a triangle, because that supports it. So we're going to use the um, ball tool end to make a little hollow, okay, like this. And then with my companion tool, I would just press gently just into the bottom of my petals here. So I'm just going to use my, this will be my fourth, this will be my fifth. All right, so you're going to get this almost like this little, as you can see, like a star in the middle. And then with your needle tool, you're just going to make a little hole just to sort of encourage the wire to go down. Because the 28 gauge wire is quite a soft one. Now remember, there's, you know, two options. Um, the ones I have here, these were all made with stamens, all right? So these were all made with the stamens. And uh, so this is the stamen technique. And then, um, so we, I'm going to use, show you the stamen one in this, but also we could use the thread one, okay? And uh, so here, what we're now going to do is going to take my um, small paintbrush. You don't need a huge brush here. Going to take some egg white. All right, so I've got some egg white here. So just going to use your rim of your little container there. Get rid of your excess egg, and then we're going to brush some egg white just around the very top of the brown, which is going to be around the base of the stamens. All right, like like that. Just keep your um, egg white brush in a washcloth in a flannel, so obviously that keeps it from drying. And then we're going to just take your wire through here. You're just going to pull it through, and you want to pull it so the brown just disappears. It wants to still be a little bit visible, but the brown is still a little bit visible there. And then what we're going to do is you're going to just going to waste the back. All right, so you're just going to waste your back there like so. And then you're going to cut that. Um, so you're going to just waste the back there. And it wants to be approximately about 13 millimeters, about half an inch. So on your back, just bring in my size guide here. Oop. So here, so to your actual back of where you cut it is about, as I said, about half an inch, about 13 millimeters. So just trim that through. Just pull off the excess paste. Just remold that around. And the other th nice thing about the uh, sugar in paste, for those of you that are maybe just starting in making sugar flowers, the nice thing about it, it doesn't dry too quickly either. And it stays flexible um, for a long time. So, and as I said, it never gets really 100% dry. Now there's two, there's two uh, types. I'm using the humid one. Um, there's also an original formula. I, because I live in a humid environment, I prefer the humid one. But as I said, they both work really great. Now then what you're going to do is, so once you've got your back of your flower, we're going to then just tweak it. So you can just sort of tweak your petals so they'll have that nice natural look. This is also why we made the little cut, the additional cut there, because this is a single flower in cherry. So the thing is, it means that you can, you can um, get that nice sort of natural look to it. You see from the side there, like so. And then when you do this, um, you can take, um, like in the, say the five, I'm gonna show you in the finished spray. Um, I've got, um, as you can see here, I've got three open ones, all right? And then two of them I've just closed up a little bit more because that will then mean you get that natural um, sort of like, you know, this process of from bud right through to half open flower to fully open flower. And uh, so you're gonna take your, so if you're gonna do that, you're just gonna hold it upside down and then you're just gonna just give your flower just a little bit of shape and then you just hang it upside down. Now um, you can use like a large drying rack. This is actually for canned goods. So it's a smaller one like you put into a cabinet with canned goods to give you room underneath and on top because these flowers are very shallow. But as I said, this is good to, uh, to hang the small flowers on. Um, uh, the sugar in paste is not quite as floppy as a regular flower paste or gum paste. Um, so when you make the flowers, a lot of times you won't have to hang them, but usually I would just hang them upside down uh, just for a couple of minutes and you've got them, uh, you know, then they can go into your styrofoam foam block, all right? But, um, but as I said, you know, you can go a darker color. I just, if you use a number three small, but if you use a three regular, it's gonna be a little tiny bit darker. So really, again, it's gonna depend on the color of the blossoms you're wanting to make, or also how you would, um, what sort of uh, colors combination you're going to use and what color cake is going on to. So that is the cherry blossom um, flower. Okay, so we've got the cherry blossom flowers ready now. Um, so these are gonna dry. Um, next, we're gonna move on to making the buds of the cherry blossom. So next, we're gonna move on to the buds. So we're actually gonna be making four different sizes of buds. Okay, so we're gonna be making the small size bud in the small cavity in pale green, 
then we're going to make the um, next size up in uh, the medium cavity. And then this size and then the bigger size are both made in the larger cavity. Of course, these haven't been dusted yet. They've got pumps. Some of them have got their calyxes on, which I'll be showing you um, in the, uh, after the leaves. Now, so when we make the um, small buds and the leaves, we're going to use a very pale green. So in the uh, introduction, uh, it talks about making pale green. So again, I have here the sugar in paste, uh, but this would also work with the, uh, you know, Renshaw white and green. This is a very comparable color to the Renshaw green that I've used in a lot of my videos, but we have a number, um, this is a nine small, so it goes through the hole and a seven small, it goes through the hole. And you're just going to mix these together and that is going to give us this pale green, okay? And I've given you uh, this quantity we're using, this is enough for the actual spray I'm showing, okay? But you're just going to mix this through and get a very pale gray a pale green. Now, um, if you're going to color paste, like for example, pink, um, a lot of the brands of pink on the market are very vibrant, like very sort of garish pink. Um, so uh, in the US, like the, um, the Chef Master, they have a color called ribbon. That is a no fade pink. So it means it doesn't fade um, and uh, is a very, very nice pink. And in the UK, the sugar flare pink uh, that is also very comparable to the Chef Master one. It's like a no fade pink because some of the brands of pink are very bright, but also they will fade very, very quickly. Although we dust these, but you don't want the uh, cherry blossoms to almost like turn white like overnight. So, so you're just going to put that really pale green in your in your bag, and that's we're going to use that next. Now we're going to do each of the buds is a little bit different. So for the smallest size buck cavity, going to take a full length 28 gauge wire. All right, so with this, this is a full length 28 gauge wire. We're going to use quarter width brown or twig. So whatever color you used for your, so very much like when we do like Lily the Valley and things like that. We're just going to cover this over. So you're just going to just go around the end and you're just going to just tape down to the bottom here. All right, so we're just going to just come down. It's going to tape down to the base here. And depending on how many buds you want to do, you can cover, you know, two or three wires. Uh, because you might be wanting to do a bigger spray of cherry. Okay, and then I'm just going to cut the little end parts off there. So just to get a nice neat. And then I'm going to cut these wires are going to be cut into quarters. Okay, so then we're going to then, uh, so going to cover and then cut into four. All right, so just going to use your, cut these here, two, three, four. Okay. Now we're going to make, uh, so you want to make a very small closed hook on the end. If you've done my uh, ultimate filler flower, like for example, hydrangeas, very similar to a hydrangea. So we're going to make a little tiny hook on the end of this wire. So just going to come down a little bit, but it's going to make just a very tiny little hook. Just fold that over like that. So it's just going to be like a little tiny, uh, sort of fairly small hook, quite a closed hook. All right. But as a sort of, because we're working with a fairly small ball of paste. Now we're going to then, um, once we've done that, so of course you can hook as many of these as you want to make the small buds. We're going to take a number four ball of the very pale green paste and make into a 10 millimeter, three eighths of an inch long sausage. Okay, so we're going to take your, here, so we're going to take a number four ball. So it's going to be a number four here. Remember when we're just using a normal measuring, it'll be one third below two thirds above. A little bit smaller we go. All right, so you've got your number four small, so it's about a third below and about two thirds above, okay? And of course you would measure off as many balls as you need and just keep those underneath a little cup. So, you know, if you're measuring, obviously you're making three of these, just put the other two under your little cup. Now we're going to use the, um, this is the cavity we use to make like the Mexican hat, the hat shape on. So this is the smallest cavity here. And then to the, to the, um, the other side of that is going to be the medium one, and then the large one is in the middle. So it's the three, it's the three that are above the uh, the cherry blossom shape, right? So this is a small, this is the medium, this is large. You can see obviously the size of the hole is bigger. Okay, so again, we're going to take a little bit of uh, vegetable shortening here. And I'm just going to just put that into the bottom of the molds into those three cavities. You don't have to do this every time you use it. And just remember when you finish with the mold, you always want to wash this with some washing up liquid, some dish soap, and then uh, then as I give it a good rinse and then let them dry. I use my food dehydrator to dry my molds if I needed to use them uh, soon afterwards. You wash them and then of course also you can put these in a dishwasher as well. 
Now, so what we're going to do here, we're going to take your paste. So we're going to take this and we're going to make this into a 10 millimeter uh, long sausage. All right, so you're just going to roll that into a little sausage, which just wants to be about 10 millimeters in length. All right, so it's about a 10 millimeter sausage there. And then you can also just put a little touch of cornstarch or corn flour onto that as well, just so that it's uh, not sticky, all right? And then what we're gonna do here is you're gonna take, take this vertically and you're gonna place the sausage into the cavity. So it's gonna go into the, you can see it sits in the middle of the cavity like this, all right? Now, of course, it's a lot smaller. And then once we get it into there, um, so then gonna just press gently with the ball tool and the companion tool and then press gently on top, then brush uh, with egg white on the hook and insert it into the bud. So what we're gonna do then, you're gonna take your companion tool, all right, and we're just gonna just press that very, very gently, all right, just, just very gently, because what we wanted to do is gonna push it down into there, but also it's going to emboss the design on the top, all right? So then we're gonna take your egg white, and you're gonna take your egg white, you're gonna put that onto your hook, Okay, and then you're gonna take your hook and you're gonna push that into the top of the bud. Just gonna push that into the top of the bud like this. So you can see that the paste is in there. Then once we've done that, um, you're gonna hold the wire and then you're gonna flex the mold vertically then horizontally, all right? So what you do here is you hold the, hold the wire. I'm just gonna do this so you can sort of see coming around here like that, okay? So you, what you're gonna do here, hold the wire, all right, whichever is more comfortable, I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna use my left hand, and then I'm gonna squash this way, and then I'm gonna actually squash this way, where I'll put the my finger into that hole and go that way and that way. And it doesn't matter which way you do it, but you go like this way and this way. So this is very much like the hydrangea. So you're gonna press that, you're gonna press it. You can do that a couple of times. So you see what that's done is push the paste around the wire, okay? Um, and then what that means is that when you take this out, this will obviously hold on, all right? So you need to make sure that when you do that, you know, you press it and you press it. So you see how the, but you can see there that the paste has actually gone around there. And you're just gonna just flex that and just gonna come out of the mold. And you're gonna get this little, um, like almost like a little five star on the top, all right? So you're just gonna just mold this around. Just need to have enough egg white on there. So you're just gonna get this little, so you're gonna get this little five point uh, star there. And then all you then do is where you're gonna use your, your companion tool, you're just gonna mark down from those, those five little lines here. All right, and you can use this one for bigger ones as well, but you're gonna get these just like little lines there and you're gonna get the shape of the bud, but you just mold this around like so, okay? And that's gonna give you your, that will be your uh, smallest bud, okay? So that's how you do the smallest bud. Now then we're gonna move on to the medium cavity. Um, and then what we're gonna do here is gonna take a third length 28 gauge green or white wire, create a floral tape bud three times, hook times three. So we're gonna create like a little floral, so we're gonna do like a little mini floral tape bud, again, as used in some of my other Flower Pro projects. And so you're gonna go around the end of the wire, so just go around with your tape, you're gonna go one, two, three. And of course this is soft wire, so you can just bend it with your fingers. So you hook it, and then we're gonna go one, two, three and then you're gonna come down the wire here, about halfway down, so you make this little tiny floral tape bud, all right? And of course you'd make as many of those as you need. Now, then we're going to take um, a number five ball of the very pale pink. So with your very pale pink, which we have uh, here, we've already measured this off, so we're gonna use a number five size ball of paste. So that's gonna be a number five. I think I'm just showing you one of each, but of course you would, uh, you know, make as many of you need of each of those. So this is gonna be number five size. So this is just gonna be regular size, one third below, two thirds above. Again, we're just gonna take that. All right, now this one we're going to make into a 15 millimeter sausage. So we're gonna make it into a little tiny bit longer. So it'd be about 15 millimeters approximately, okay. And again, we're gonna use same concept. Remember, I've already got the, the uh, shortening. They put a little bit of corn flour, corn starch into there. Now, so this, this one is gonna go, so you see, we've used this one. We're gonna go to this one here, okay? Because we're doing the rounded ones. You see, that will actually like fill the, nearly come to the top of the mold, all right? And then again, you're gonna take your companion tool, gonna to press this in just gently, all right? And then we're gonna take your egg white, 
You're going to brush your egg white onto your floral tape bud. Now, because this wire is very thin, all right, if you hold it like here, it's just going to bend. So when you put it in, you're going to hold it quite close, quite low down like this. and just going to push that into the center of the bud. So you see the floral tape bud will nearly disappear into there. This one, because it's a little bigger, you don't usually have to hold the wire. And again, you're just going to do this flexing. So you just see you flex it that way, and then you're just going to flex it that way. So you see how I've got my fingers in there, and you're just going to just do it. And do it a couple of times. All right, so you can see how the wire is gone. You see how the paste is molded around the wire. And then usually what you do is just to sort of open up the mold, all right? If you're having, because these ones, as you can see, are more rounded. So they have what we call undercut. So in mold making, when something has undercut, it means that it sort of disappears like underneath, like a ball. And so the thing is, is on these ones, and also on the green one as well, you can just sort of flex the mold a little bit just to open that out, all right? The other ones are more elongated, and you can sort of see the edge of those. So they, those are... These ones are, as I said, and this is going to give you, and you get these nice veins on here. So it's got the veins on. And then we're just going to just mold this down. So you're just going to use your fingers just to mold this down um, here. And then with your companion tool, just again, just going to just continue the line from the, from here. It's just going to continue down here like so. So you're just, just coming from the line that's on the bud. All right, so you see you have the segments there. You're just going to continue those lines down to the bottom. But you just literally don't remove any paste, but you're just going to mold it so you get this nice shape on the back. And so that, that would be your, um, your next one. Okay, and then the last two, which will be then the moving on to the next one. So in your directions there, this is going to be, um, going to be the large cavity. This is the large buds, all right? So that's going to be the middle one there above the heart, all right? You can see it's got this little divot in the middle. Now those are going to be done where we're going to take a here, your wires. And then this time we're going to make a repeat floral tape bud, but five times hooking another five times, okay? So on these ones here, so you're going to go one, two, three, four, five, hook, one, two, three, four, five, okay? And you're just going to work this down like so. All right. And we'll also do the extra large is going to be the same as well. So you can just prepare as many of those as you need. Five. Hook. Now, the reason why I didn't do the little tiny one with a floral tape bud is it would be too big, even a three times hook times three. That's why I just hooked, hooked those ones there. Now here, um, on the uh, large and extra large, they're both done in the same cavity. So that's that middle one there. And uh, we're going to repeat floral tape bud. Then we're going to take a number six and repeat as for the medium buds. Then finally take the needle tool end of the companion tool and press into the top of the buds to work the petal tips inwards to frill a little. Now this bud, um, as I said, in some future, um, uh, future videos, I will be showing like how to make geraniums and different other sort of uh, summery flowers. So this has been designed so that uh, you can use it to look more of like a rounded petal or more of a slightly frilly petal. So this is going to be a number um, six size, all right? So this is going to just be regular number six size here. And that's going to go into there. So you have, you know, one third below, two thirds above. Again, just condition your paste. And then here, we're going to then, uh, so we're going to repeat for the medium bud. So we're actually going to be making this, as I said, like 15 millimeters in length, okay? Okay, a little bit of uh, corn flour on there, especially if your paste feels sticky, all right? And then you're just going to, again, just going to press this into the mold there, like so. So that will actually, like, almost like fill, again, come to the top of the mold. You're going to take your um, ball tool here, the little companion tool, press that in. You can go in a little bit further, a little bit firmer there, because this is a little bit bigger. And again, we're going to take your egg white, I'm going to brush a little bit of egg white onto here. And then again, hold the, at the bottom here. I'm going to insert this in. All right, so you're going to insert that in till it just not, not completely disappears, but just disappears a little bit. And again, you see how you're going to flex this. So you're going to flex it, you're going to flex it. Just do that a couple of times, all right? So that will hold that in there. And then you're just going to just open that out. And then we're going to just mold this down. Okay, so I'm just pinching that down a little bit. And then if your brown, if your wire comes out a little bit, what you're going to do there is just, uh, just use your, uh, just pull it down. All right. And then what I'm going to do here is on the top of this, um, I'm going to just use my 
end of my companion tool, just to sort of like where the five petals are, because this looks like a sort of a bud that's starting to open. Just gonna just press on the top there. So it will actually look a little bit more frilly, okay? And uh, that would be um, how we would do uh, that one. All right, so that's gonna be your, so that is your large bud. And then we're going to make an extra large bud, which is gonna be done in the same way. Oh, sorry, I forgot to, uh, and just remember to bring your, and then also of course to bring your, uh, from your petals, gonna bring your lines down there like that as well too. Okay. So just do that on each of them. So you're gonna get these lines coming down the side. So what the mold does, it gives the effect of the bud starting to open. And then when we do the, when we do the, um, the large size one, that is gonna be a six large. Now, uh, you have in your instructions there, a quarter below, three quarters above, this will fill the mold. So, so what we do here is you take, so that's gonna be like what we call a large number six. I don't use large size very often, but you see that is about a quarter below the paste and about three quarters above, but you see it's way, it's way smaller than a small number seven, which would be the next step up. So sometimes in my uh, videos and my classes and like for the Flower Pro group and things, we use sometimes like it's the large number six, large number nine. So this is gonna be done exactly the same way. And so you're just gonna just take that, gonna roll it into a little sausage about 15 millimeters long and put just a little cornstarch onto there. So this will go into the mold here all right, and you're just gonna push that in so it actually sort of goes in so it will become level with the top. And then you're gonna push the, say your companion tool in, you can go a little bit. And then we're gonna take your, remember with your floral tape bud, you don't, the brown uh, floral tape, it doesn't completely disappear into there because um, if not, what's gonna happen is gonna come out the end, all right? This one's a little bit deeper. Um, but as I said, see so when you push your floral tape bud into there, you see how I've got a little bit of brown still visible at the top there, okay? And then again, I'm gonna press, I'm gonna press, gonna press, gonna press a couple of times, all right? So you see that's almost pushed the paste up a little bit. I'm just gonna open up the mold, all right? So you can see this one's a little bit bigger there. So you're just gonna mold this around. So you see how I'm just gently working the paste down. All right, now, so this is made, so like if you were doing a flower like a geranium, or as I said, a bud that's just smooth, this will look like the sort of the closed up bud. But because we want to, so you can continue your uh, paste down, so you can just take your floral tape bud here. There we go, so this is gonna be the second petal, and this will be the third petal, the fourth petal, and the fifth petal, okay? And then what we're gonna do here is on that top, we're just gonna use your, See, I'm using my companion tool and I'm just pushing this so it almost looks a bit like a sort of a frilly flower. So it creates that look of the, as I said, the open uh, bud of the cherry, okay? The op opening bud, so you have more texture. So you see that the, the smaller ones here, all right, the smaller ones are um, obviously just almost segmented into five, but you remember that you have the veining on here. It's got all the nice veining and these are the ones that can do both those the same. And they look like the bud is starting to open. Um, and of course, when we color this, we're gonna put some color on the edge that will really define that. So those are the, uh, the buds, all right? And so um, next step is going to be, we're gonna move on to the leaves. Um, and then we will let everything dry. And then when we come back, we'll then of course put the calyx on and then go through to the finishing up. So now we're gonna move on to the leaves. Now for the leaves, the small leaf is number five, ball of green paste, the pale green, and the large is number six. Now, so we're gonna use the um, serrated, we're gonna use the two on the outside. This is the one that's got little serrations. So some cherry has serrated and some fruit trees have serrated leaves, very slight serration. Like a rose leaf, if you look at this compared to a rose leaf, totally a different shape, all right? But a very much a very, very fine serration. And then these are smaller ones and they have a little bit of shape to the edge of them as well. But we're gonna use these two. So this is the small, this is the large. Now, first of all, cherry doesn't um, have leaves. When the cherry blossoms and buds first come out, they're just gonna be the flowers and blossoms. The leaves come when the flowers die off. Now, so when I do the double flowering cherry, when I show you that, I'm gonna just use just the flowers and buds. And then on the single flowering cherry, I'm gonna add some leaves. I like to have a little bit of leaves, but the leaves would come a little later. So a lot of the flowers have already died when the leaves start to come onto the tree, okay? Now, so we're gonna again, just gonna put a little bit of vegetable uh, fat shortening into your molds here. It's a little tiny, tiny bit. 
okay? Now, the reason why we don't use too much is because if you were to take, for example, here, I take some vegetable fat, some vegetable shortening, and I put it on my table, all right? In three weeks time, that's still going to look exactly the same, okay? It doesn't really dry. And so the thing is, if you're too liberal with your vegetable fat or shortening, what's going to happen is when you come to dust the flowers, you're going to get like uh, the dusting powder is going to smudge because of what's going to happen is the uh, you have to use too much of the vegetable shortening, all right? But I said, if you don't have a brush, just use a little tiny, tiny bit. So just do that with your finger. And again, just rub it very into the mold here, like so. But especially on some of the deeper molds, the, um, the uh, little brush works really well, like on my pine cones and things. Um, but a lot of my shallow um, Flower Pro items, is, it will help to make the paste almost stick in there. Now, so we're gonna take the, so we're gonna start off with the number five. I'm gonna show you the small one, then the large one. So we're gonna take your paste here. And so you're gonna make it into a sausage about two thirds of the cav length of the cavity. So you can see here, this is gonna be about two thirds of the length of the leaf, okay? Just gonna press that in with my finger, like so. Okay, and then you can use either your cosmetic wedge because these are quite small projects. Um, the wedge um, works well, but you can also use a full surround cosmetic sponge as well. But it's gonna just work this into the leaf and just down just into the where the sort of the stem part, the shape of the leaf, okay? And then we're going to establish a little ridge. Now on something small like that, this is easier to do with your companion tool. So you're gonna just sort of roll to create like a little ridge for the wire. You see, so I've got like a little little ridge there. Just make sure your paste comes all the way to the, to the end there. Because remember, your leaves want to be thinner on the edge. So we're gonna use here, um, so we're gonna use a 28 gauge uh, white wire, all right? And the reason why we're using white wire here is because um, if you use green wire, it's gonna be, because it's a very pale green, it's gonna notice. All right, so again, I'm gonna just dip my wire into my little egg white. It's gonna remove my excess egg. And then we're just gonna take the little channel here and just gonna fill that. Just tickle your finger. That's gonna go into the leaf about halfway in, okay? Remember, if your wire sort of sticks out, just pull it back in and just hold with your finger, just gonna go over the top there, like so. Now we're gonna take your back veiner. So just like all of my, um, obviously, Flower Pros that we've done back veiners for, you're just gonna line this up so you see that the wire is in the V shape. All right, just gonna just press that on the top there, like so. And so then you see how you're gonna get this beautiful veining on the back of your leaf, okay? Just gonna flex your mold, gonna take your leaf out you see how you can have this lovely serration, these little tiny serrations on the edge. And on the back of the leaf, all right, what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually just gonna use that technique of using my companion tool needle. And I'm just like rolling very gently because the leaf doesn't really have a lot of movement into it. So we're just gonna, just gonna go along the edge here like this. So you're just gonna get just a little tiny bit of movement. And then on the front side, we're gonna hollow this around the needle end of the companion tool. You're gonna pinch it like a taco shape, so you get that like Mexican taco, like a V shape, all right? And then we're gonna dry that in convoluted foam. And uh, so this is a convoluted foam former, so you just dry, dry the leaf in there. You see when it dries, it's a little bit lighter, okay? Because obviously when things are wet, they're gonna, once they dry, it happens with paste. And then when you do the large one, I'm gonna do exactly the same technique, so I'll just show you the large leaf. And then we've got now all of our components. So we've got our flowers. So obviously make as many flowers as you need. You're gonna make then buds and you make your leaves. And then these need to dry. And of course, if you want to speed up the drying of this, you can use about two thirds of the length. Just press that in with your fingers, all right? But you can use a food dehydrator, which I use for a lot of my uh, classes and videos and things so I can dry things quickly. So a food dehydrator, you just would pop these into the food dehydrator at uh, 115 Fahrenheit, about 45 degrees centigrade. And uh, literally you just put them in the food dehydrator for about two hours, they would be totally dry. And this is also great a food dehydrator because I live in a humid environment here in Atlanta. And uh, so, um, and when also with my Ultimate Flower Members, my Ultimate Flower Members Club, um, a lot of the times we're doing sort of projects where um, we're doing a lesson, like a virtual lesson. So the thing is the students will often have to make a cone and then let it dry and enter the next stage. So they can just, while they're making something else, pop that in the food dehydrator. Um, so a food dehydrator really helps. But as I said, when um, once you've got, once these are dry, you're going to then, of course, uh, 
move on to the next stage, which will be the calyxes and then the coloring. So here you can also use your finger to create like a little ridge. It's going to just see how I'm just sort of working with my, to just make, do needs to come about halfway down just to make a slight ridge there. And then we're going to take your, here, your wire. Again, just going to put that into the, and this wants to just sort of go into about halfway into the leaf. Okay. And then we're going to take the back veiner. Now, um, this is obviously what we use for the flower. This is the back veiner here, right? Um, I found they were very convenient when I designed this. The idea would be if you wanted to, you could actually cut that with a pair of scissors. It's just because when they're manufactured, it keeps them together. But I would suggest just keeping it like this because they don't get in the way. Um, and it means you'll always have those when you need them. Now, if you press this on the top, all right? So like, for example, let's say I did that on purpose. You see how the vein goes a little bit off. You can just repress it. But if you generally line that up, I'm just gonna press down the middle there, like so, you're gonna get your nice, your nice vein in. Just gonna flex your mold. It's gonna mold around the bottom. So remember on the back of the leaf, I'm just going to just uh, define that. So literally, as I said, just gonna use my, and when I do this, I usually find if you actually just lift your pad up like this. So you see what I'm doing is I'm just using my, little companion tool like this. This also doesn't disturb the veining on the back of the leaf as well. Whereas if we use the ball in tool, it would, but I always want that like little tiny ruffled edge. So I really don't want to have more of a softening that we'd normally use for a lot of foliage. And then again, you're just gonna just hollow the base of your leaf around your companion tool. You're gonna pinch this like a taco shell. So you're gonna get that slight V shape. And then you're going to then just put that in your convoluted foam like this to dry, okay? And that is how we would dry the leaves uh, ready for uh, coloring. But as I explained, you know, you don't always have leaves on cherry, okay? Because when cherry is very early in the season, it's just gonna be the flowers and buds, then the leaves come later. So that's really, this is an optional step, all right? I like to use a few leaves because it sort of just to me gives it a little bit more of a sort of a, a contrast to the flowers. But as I said, in the double flowering cherry, I'll be showing you at the end of this video, I will be using just the cherry blossoms. So we're now going to continue with the calyx. Um, the calyx obviously goes on once the flowers and buds have dried for a little while. They don't need to be totally dry. Now um, on the mold here, there are two calyxes, all right? There is a small calyx and a large calyx. Um, these can also be used for flowers, all right? And then for example, some future uh, videos showing the use of this, like using these for example, the middle of a primula, and you can use these also for like little jasmine type of flowers as well. So anyway, for when we do the flowers, so on the actual blossoms, the flowers, I'm gonna use the larger calyx, all right? And then for the buds, I'm gonna use the smaller calyx. And um, when we use this, we're gonna use our pale, very pale green paste. So we're gonna start off with a number seven ball of very pale green. Uh, this is the green we use for the leaves. So There's gonna be a number seven size ball of paste. So this is gonna go into the size guide. So one third below, two thirds above. So just a sort of standard standard size green or size standard size measuring. Uh, we're gonna condition this a little bit. And then what we're gonna do here, we're gonna just roll this into a little sausage. A lot of times when I'm rolling like sausages, I work on a little, like a little silicone mat. This just gives you a little bit of almost like traction. And this you can obviously just use a regular size, a little mini mat. And so then we're gonna roll this into a sausage. Now it doesn't matter how long the sausage is, as long as it's sort of the same approximate diameter along. Okay, just make sure the ends are fairly square. You can also use your little scraper for that. So you can actually just level out the ends. So you see you have the sausage there. All right, I'll just take it off of the little mat, it's a little easier to see. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut this into 12. Okay, so gonna cut it into, first of all, into quarters. Okay, like so. And then each quarter will be cut into three. Now this is a way that when I teach, and on some of my videos I've shown this technique, for example, when I did my wedding foliage uh, video, I used this method. And it's just a way of rather than physically, because what we're actually making here is we're making like number three size balls of paste, but rather than measuring like 12 number threes, this is just a quick way to do it, you see? So then we will take your you see these will actually then give you like number three size balls of paste, see? Now we're gonna keep these under a little pot. 
Now, of course, this will be dependent on how many cherry blossom flowers. In the spray, I'm going to show you with a single cherry blossom. I'm just using, uh, going to use uh, just five flowers. But it's obviously, if you were doing a bigger cake or whatever, um, you could uh, vary that. Now, so you're going to keep those under a little pot to stop them drying. We're going to take your larger cavity. We're going to put a little bit of the vegetable shortening uh, fat into that. We will also do the small one as well, because we'll be doing that in a moment. We're going to take your... As I said, this is a number three size. Just gonna place that into the middle of the mold. Press it in with your finger. And then we're gonna use the Dresden tool. And we're just gonna literally just pull the, with the Dresden tool, we're gonna to pull the paste into the tip of the mold here like this, all right? So you see, so it's, it's gonna be very thin, which is what we want. So you're just gonna pull that into the third, gonna pull that into the fourth, I'm going to pull that into the fifth part of the mold, okay? And then you could just use a cosmetic sponge or your finger just to sort of press that in. Now, because the cherry is a sort of like the back of the cherry is sort of cone shape, what we're going to do here is because we'll have a little bit of overlap, we want to make a little cut between each of these sections to allow for the calyx to slightly overlap. Now, I found the easiest way to do that is to use your companion tool. And literally all I'm going to do here is just with the companion tool, as you can see, I'm just going to just pull in just a little tiny bit from where the calyx, from where the mold finishes. I'm just going to just separate this just a little tiny bit. And this will be the fifth one here. There, like so. Okay. So here you can see the little cuts in between. All right. And uh, then we're just going to flex. Now you can just flex this, take it out of the mold, and then I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to put it onto a cosmetic sponge. And I'm going to use my uh, needle tool end and just going to just pull from about halfway down. So the end half of the calyx will have a little bit more of a point to it and will also be just a little bit, um, as I said, uh, most like a slight taco shape. And then we're going to use the ball tool end and we're going to cup the middle of this. All right. Now we're going to take um, some egg white and I'm going to brush the egg white. And my egg white is going to just be brushed into the sort of the middle area and just about halfway down, so just almost about halfway down. You don't have to do it all over, so you're just gonna go into the middle and just about halfway down just each of the calyxes. And then just remember, keep that in your wet towel. So we're gonna do this onto your flowers. Now, so what we're then gonna do is we're gonna take the wire, we're gonna push the wire through the middle like this. We're gonna put this onto your cosmetic sponge with hole, and then you're gonna pull the flower. So you see how the flower, will, the calyx will just come up onto the base of the flower. And then there's two ways to do this. You can either use your fingers just to squash this on. Because this is quite tapered, you see you'll have a little tiny bit of an overlap here on your calyx. Um, or you can also, when you do this, you can just take that on your cosmetic sponge. And then with your cosmetic sponge, you can just push it on with your cosmetic sponge like that. But you see how that is why we made the little cuts, uh, slight cuts between. Because this is uh, when you have a flower that's more rounded, all right, like a rounded base, um, for example, um, then you don't have to do that. But if you have a flower that is more tapered, this means that the calyx will fit on. And then I'm just gonna, just gonna just, um, open that out just a little bit. So just gonna use my little companion tool just to open that out just a little bit like that. And there we will have our beautiful calyx, all right? Now you would put that onto all of the, uh, all onto the uh, flowers, all right? And uh, so that would go on to all of your flowers. Now that would also include um, in a little, in the next part of this, because this is going to be a two part video. Um, in the second part of this, I'm going to be showing double flowering cherry and then how I actually color the cherry and how I put the branch together. So again, you see how uh, you would do the same on the obviously double flowering cherry. So for the, for the flowers themselves, you'd use the, um, as I said, the larger of the two cavities, okay? Now, when you do the, when we do the buds, okay, so obviously when you've got all of your flowers, you can just, uh, if you have any remaining paste, you can put that back into your little pot. So then when we do the buds, we're going to repeat the process with the small calyx, which I'm going to show you that. And here, what we're going to do is going to use a number seven small, okay? So we use a number seven for the large size calyxes into 12. And here, we're going to have a number seven small. Okay, so you just want to just mold that so it goes through the whole all right, so it's gonna be your number seven small. And again, we're just gonna just uh, condition this. 
and uh, we're going to condition it and then we're going to roll this into a sausage and cut this into 12. Now, of course, if you're doing a big spray of uh, cherry for a wedding cake, you might need to repeat this two or three times. But your um, paste um, that we started off with for doing the leaves, that for the spray, you'll have more than enough to do the five leaves and then, of course, the calyxes on your flowers and buds. But you might need to do a double batch of the green if you have more leaves and more, um, more uh, buds and calyxes to do. So we're going to cut this into quarters. Okay, and then I'm just going to show you a couple of these. But anyway, so you just cut the quarters into thirds. All right, and then these will actually make number three small size, you see? So that actually will go through the number three, uh, number three hole, okay? So just really, you just have a smaller version of your pieces. And again, just keep those under your little pot. So exactly the same technique, all right? We're going to take your uh, number three small, but I said one twelfth. See how you just press this in with your finger. So you see what it's going to do? It's a little bit like when we made the cherry blossom, when we did that first part. And then here, we're going to use your Dresden tool. Now remember, this is called the Dresden tool, Dresden veining tool. The flatter end here is the Dresden tool. This gets its name from Dresden in Germany. Um, and uh, then this is the veining tool, which is the thin end. So we're going to just use that. So you just literally use the Dresden tool flat. And we're going to work this. Now, you remember back to when I showed you the cherry blossom flower, we use that Dresden tool like this, almost like stretching. But here, we're actually using it to stretch to the end of the cavities. Okay, and then you can just, just to even that up, you can just press it in. You can also just rub over your finger as well. That just makes sure you don't have any sort of excess paste. And then here, this is where we're going to take your, so literally what I'm doing is I'm just using my little companion tool and I'm just almost just sort of scratching where the natural, you see how you're gonna get these little tiny lines that will just come into there. So what it's doing is just dividing the calyx. So when we put it around a, like a, a sort of tapered base that it will come around, okay? And you can also, another way you can do that is just put, pop that out with your companion tool as well. So you're just gonna pop it on your, um, as I said, cosmetic sponge. I'm just gonna use the needle tool end of the, co of the companion tool. It's gonna just come down each of the pieces here, like this. Then we're going to just cup that in the middle, like so. Okay, taking your egg white, so then we're just going to put a little bit of egg white just about halfway down the calyx here because this is what we call a loose calyx. Sometimes we do uh, fitted calyxes on some of my flowers I've shown. The calyx is fitted and then sometimes the calyx is loose where it actually like almost like sticks out. Now when we do this, um, so we're going to take the buds and this will be the same on all four buds. So you're just going to just take that and go through I'm going to just pull this up. You see, you can just use your cosmetic sponge here, just mold this around. And then you're just gonna just take your calyx now, I'm just gonna open that out just a little bit like that, okay? Now the very large bud, you could even use the same size as the flower, but when we come down to the little tiny one, um, this is where, as I said, to the smaller ones, definitely you would use a smaller calyx. And so you're just gonna just show you on this little small one, so you have an idea about the sort of the size. You know, just press that in. You can either use your fingers there or your cosmetic sponge. And then we're just gonna stretch this to the end of the calyx. Okay. So this is not filling up the calyx because you want this to be quite thin. And again, you're just going to just work the, so just with the needle to end, you just almost just like scratching just a little bit. And this won't damage the mold. Well, turns over, you could also take this out and then use a pair of scissors, but I find it actually easier. It gives a nicer shape to do it while it's in the mold. Just flex it slightly. Just going to pop this out. And then again, we're just going to just take this. Just going to use your needle tool. This is on about the end half of the, Little calyx. I'm going to cup this. And then again, we're just going to put a little bit of egg white just sort of in the middle, about halfway down. And then we're going to take, so this would be like your very small bud. Of course, this is the same green as the 
but is made from. Again, just going to put this in here like this, just mold this around. And again, you're just going to open out just a little tiny bit. Okay, and that will give you a little tiny uh, calyx on your bud. Okay, so those will be your um, components. So we have the, obviously the cherries, you have your cherries with the calyxes on, you've got your, um, you've got your little buds with your calyxes on. And remember, you can use like little straws. Um, these are just like little uh, cake pop straws or cocktail straws you can use. Because remember, when you have thin wires, they often will bend when they go into the, into there. So we have um, now we've made our uh, cherry, made our cherry buds, we made our cherry leaves, and we have calyxes on our components. And uh, so that is, um, will be the end of this part, the first part of this video. And uh, so as I said, in the next part, I'm going to show you uh, how to actually uh, make the double cherry blossom. And then I'm going to go on to show you the coloring on the single cherry, the cherry leaves, the cherry buds, and then the coloring on the double cherry. And then I'm going to show you actually how to wire both of them into a very realistic spray to go onto a cake. So I hope you enjoyed the first part of this video using my Flower Pro Blossoms to make single cherry blossoms. And I look forward to seeing you in the next part. So see you in part two. Bye.